What we perceive as sound is the change in air pressure by vibrations. If we create a sound by plucking a guitar string, there is a fundamental note that is heard. This fundamental note can be represented by a sine wave, which can be modeled by the following graph. This is an example of what we call a continuous waveform. In simple terms, it is continuous because there are no abrupt breaks or jumps from one point to another in the graph. Let's imagine that part of this graph represents a hill. As we go from left to right, we go up the hill, and then after reaching the top, we go down the hill to a valley to start the process all over again. And now imagine that someone made a staircase to go up and down the hill. If we graph the staircase with the previous graph, it would look like this. The graph of the staircase is not a continuous graph, because there is an abrupt change from one step to another. You experience the difference between these two every time you go up a staircase and hold the handrail. Your feet are abruptly changing from one step to the next, but your hand stays continuously on the handrail. Now that we've learned how to walk up and down a hill, let's see how this relates to digital recordings. As said before, sound waves are continuous. The possible values for the change in air pressure due to vibration is an example of a continuous variable. When a microphone is used to record sound waves, the air pressure is converted into voltage, which is also a continuous variable. However, when recording digitally onto a computer, we must make a change from our continuous variable to a discrete variable. It is at this point that the continuous hill is converted into a discrete staircase. What the computer will do is sample the waveform at different points to record the voltage. Each time a sample is taken, a new step to the staircase is created. To get a sense of what this sampling is doing, here is an extreme example. I'm going to first play a piece of music with no change to the volume. And now let's play the same piece of music where this time I turn the volume on and off two times each per second. The turning on and off of the volume is the sample of the music, and each time this happens, we get a new sample. However, if the volume is on two times per second, and also off two times per second, what this means is that in total, the volume is on half of the time, and then the volume is off the other half. We can hear this in the example because there are gaps in the sound. The question then is, how do we get an accurate representation of the sound? How many steps in the staircase do we need? From this example, one thing we can tell is that we need a high number of samples per second. The number of samples per second we need is called the sampling rate of the recording. From the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem, the sampling rate needs to be more than twice the maximum frequency of the recorded signal. Human hearing has an upper frequency limit of 20,000 Hz, which means 20,000 peaks of the sine wave per second. As a frame of reference, the highest note on a piano has a frequency of 4,186 Hz. Since humans can hear up to 20,000 Hz, then to accurately capture audio we can hear, the sampling rate needs to be more than 40,000 samples per second. A standard in digital audio came to be in the late 1970s with the compact disc, which used a sampling rate of 44,100 samples per second, or 44,100 Hz, or 44.1 kHz. This is more than the 40,000 samples per second that is required, and the specific number was landed on for a variety of reasons like format, brand, and audio equipment. Since then, higher sampling rates have been used in the recording process, and CDs became less popular. But the 44.1 kHz standard is still the sampling rate of the MP3s and streaming music we listen to today. So what we have seen is that the continuous variable of vibrations through the air have been converted to the discrete variable of just 44,100 samples per second to store on our devices. And there is another discrete variable that is important to digital recording, bit depth. Where the sampling rate captured all the frequencies we can hear, the bit depth captures all of the dynamic variation in what we listen to. Sound can be quiet and it can be loud, but there is a lot of variety in between. If the bit depth was set to 1, then the volume dynamic would either be off, 0, or on, 1, with nothing in between. If we set the bit depth to 2, then the dynamic variation would have four possibilities. Off, 0, 0, quiet, 0, 1, louder, 1, 0, 
and loudest, 1-1. One, one. The numbers I'm writing are binary numbers, where each digit can only be one of two numbers, a 0 or a 1. To capture a necessary amount of volume dynamic, the CD standard is set to a bit depth of 16, which gives us 2 to the 16, or 65,536, possible values for volume. To relate all of this back to the staircase again, the sampling rate is the number of steps per second, and the bit depth is all of the possible heights between steps. While these numbers 44,100 Hz and 16-bit are discrete, they do a great job of approximating the actual continuous sound floating through the air. <laughs> 